Uh, like uh, Justin said, my name is Jesse O'Neill Loin. I'm uh, here tonight with Scott Vlamic, who's rolling out our Christmas tree right now. Um, and we're part of the team building smart things. Um, some of you may have heard of us uh, from our Kickstarter campaign or our uh, seed round that went final last week. Uh, if you haven't heard of us, that's okay too. Uh, we hope you'll all enjoy seeing a little demo of where we're at right now. So first question is, what is smart things? Well, smart things is a platform to connect all of the things in your life to the internet and make them smart. Um, smart things can be useful, uh, mission critical, or just plain fun. It's up to you. So uh, tonight, as you can see, I've got my lonely little Charlie Brown tree over there. And it's connected up to an off-the-shelf uh, Zigbee-controlled outlet, very similar to this. Um, that is actually uh, paired up with our hub, which unfortunately is just off stage, uh, but it's, it's over there and it's pumping away. Um, and so since it's paired up to our hub, I can go ahead, should have had this up, sorry. Since it's paired up with the hub, I can go ahead and turn it on. And our Christmas tree lights turn on. And I can turn it back off, and our Christmas lights will turn back off. So the way that that works is that the, the device is connected up with our hub, and so we can send messages down from the cloud to the device and have it route there. In this case, a command to turn it on and off. Um, what I've also got here is a contact sensor. Now this contact sensor is a device that we actually did manufacture ourselves. If you could see it even closer, you could tell that it is in a 3D printed enclosure from our MakerBot, which has been awesome for prototyping. Um, and this device is also paired up with the hub. So what that means is that it can also send messages to us and keep us up to date in our app. So you can see that now the message came through from the device up to the cloud and we can see that the contact sensor is open. And if we go ahead and close it, we'll see that it has closed again now. So that's sort of the basics of just controlling your devices with uh, our platform. It's, it's fun, uh, but it's not exactly smart yet. So, you know, how would you go about making it smart? Well, our answer to that is to allow you to install apps into your real world. Uh, we call these smart apps, and the team at SmartThings has already built a bunch of them for various scenarios. Uh, we have an app that will send you a text message when a door opens. Um, pretty simple, but that could be really useful for monitoring, say, your liquor cabinet and making sure no one's digging in there. Um, we've got another app uh, that will send you a text message and turn on an outlet if it gets too cold based on a temperature that you have set. Now, that could be super useful here in Minnesota to make sure that your pipes don't freeze, or at least get a warning before they're gonna freeze, and maybe turn on a heater to buy yourself some extra time. So those are just two of the examples of smart apps that we've been thinking about. Uh, the possibilities are endless uh, for smart apps. What I'm gonna go ahead and do for you right now is show you how we install a smart app. We're gonna install pretty much the simplest smart app in the world, it's called Turn On A Light When It Opens. Um, this app isn't the smartest app in the world, but you know, maybe it could make digging in the back of your closet smarter. So to add a smart app, we simply go add smart apps. You can see that we've already got some basic categories defined. In this case, we'll go ahead and go into the convenience category. We're gonna scroll down to turn on a light when it opens. You can see that the install screen really couldn't be any simpler. We simply select our contact sensor. Uh, then go ahead and choose the light we want to turn on. We'll choose our Christmas tree. And then we say install. So now with that app installed, our contact sensor, which had been cool but kind of dumb, should suddenly be a lot smarter. And when I open it, it turns on the, con the, the Christmas tree light. So again, that's super simple app, but that's the idea of the basics. Now that's cool, right? But uh, what if the app that you need doesn't exist yet? Uh, we are, if I mirror my displays, uh, we are opening up smart app development to everyone. Um, so that, like I said, if, if there's an app that you need that doesn't yet exist, uh, you can write it yourself. So here's an example of the smart app that uh, Jesse just showed us. First is a preferences section that describes what types of devices the app requires and some information about how to display it during installation. Uh, we have a couple callbacks. 
that are called when the app is installed or updated. And uh, we use those to subscribe to events. In th and the actual implementation of smart apps are really just a set of event handlers. In this case, we're listening for opened events. And uh, to turn on the light, we can just call light.on. Um, and we can simulate that with virtual devices so that you don't even need real devices in your physical world to write and test smart apps. So with the app that I just that Jesse just showed us, when I click to open the virtual contact sensor, it turned on the virtual light. So we think that's pretty powerful so that people can, like I said, build smart apps without actually having the physical devices. But what's even cooler, I think, is that it can relaunch the simulator with a real device. So if I close the contact sensor and reopen it, it turns on the Christmas tree. Uh, <laughs> So we're building the platform for the Internet of Things. Uh, and to do that, we think it needs to be easy, intelligent, and open. We've given you a, a, an example of a, the direction we're going to make things easy and intelligent. To make it open, we think that uh, we need to work with existing devices, uh, whether they be Zigbee or Z-Wave devices, or something that you build with Arduino. So for that, we've, we're producing an Arduino Shield so you can build your own devices. We also want to work with uh, devices that might have an IP address or their own cloud infrastructure. And as an example of that, uh, I'm glad that the Zacks and Stephanie left their, uh, their spark up because we can control that through our app as well. <laughs> and so I could use that in the IDE. I could uh, control that. Uh, so we we'll hope you've enjoyed uh, this look into the future and how we're hoping to make it smarter. Uh, you can stay up to date with us and by following us on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, you should go to build.smartthings.com and sign up because we're kicking off a series of developer and maker events. Um, the first being in April, uh, where we're going to actually have cash prizes and provide access to some of the biggest VCs in the country. Um, to that effect, we're also uh, going to have a hack day in January um, to help people kick off uh, their maker devices. So if you have a device you want to build or a smart app you want to build for existing devices, um, go to build.smartthings.com and sign up because we can be here in Minneapolis the place for the Internet of Things. Thanks. <laughs>